Hi, this podcast is going to give you some insights into our mission at Let's Fix Stuff. My name is Patrick Kolbeck, and I'm an aerospace engineer and former instructor at Space Camp in Huntsville, Alabama. Now, during my career in engineering, I've worked on some of the most challenging programs known to mankind. I cut my engineering teeth on nonlinear finite element analyses. From there, I went on to design systems in operation aboard the International Space Station. I've designed virtual reality training systems for our military. And I went on to work on the development of the next generation air traffic control system for the FAA. In recent years, however, I've taken on an even more complex system, <laughs> our political system. That is the focus of Let's Fix Stuff. Now, you may have noticed a distinct space exploration theme to our website. Now, it's true, my aerospace engineering background is the inspiration for this theme, but the rationale goes much deeper than that. If you look closer, you will notice a tribute to Apollo 13. Our logo was inspired by the Apollo 13 mission patch. In fact, if you look over my left shoulder, you'll see a photo of the Apollo 13 command module that reveals the aftermath of an oxygen tank explosion that occurred mid-route. Why Apollo 13? Now, Apollo 13 was supposed to be the third manned mission to the surface of the moon. The explosion of that oxygen tank on the way to the moon prevented the crew from succeeding in this objective. The explosion did give rise to another mission, though. Returning astronauts Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert safely home. This mission was immortalized by the directive issued by NASA Flight Director Gene Kranz. Failure is not an option. Now, the wireframe diagram in our logo is a depiction of the CO2 scrubber fix that enabled the success of this new mission. This fix is a prime example of what Americans are capable of achieving when we adopt a failure is not an option attitude. Rather than lament over the failure to reach the moon, rather than lament over the odds of finding a solution to a problem that they had never ever anticipated, they embraced a failure is not an option attitude and they succeeded. America needs that attitude today. Now, the idea for Let's Fix Stuff has been in the works for quite some time. As it turns out, though, now is the perfect time to launch it. We find ourselves in the middle of a pivotal political battle for the future of America. Now, true, it is an election season, and there always seems to be important political battles during election seasons, but this battle is something much larger than a single election season. You see, in America, we are no longer in a battle between Republicans and Democrats. I only wish it were that simple. Now we are in a battle between those who promote fear and those who promote rational thought. It is no longer a battle between right and left. It is a battle between right and wrong. It is a battle between those who want to fix stuff and those who want to seek to continue politics as usual. We are in a battle between those who promote fake news and those who promote the truth. Now, our goal with Let's Fix Stuff is to help even the odds in this battle. Our goal is to tilt the battlefield in favor of the truth. Now, for most of my adult life, I was oblivious to the fact that there was even a simmering battle over what was the truth. My wake-up call was very gradual. The catalyst for this wake-up call was my faith. Now, I realize that I may have lost about half of you by telling you that, and I truly hope that is not the case. My hope is that you're open-minded enough to realize that, despite popular assertions to the contrary, people of faith are more than capable of analyzing contentious topics in a reasoned, rational way. I'm just being honest with you. Jesus said that if you hold to my teachings, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I have found his words to be very true. That's what inspires me in my relentless pursuit of the truth. Now, whatever your inspiration may be, it is my hope that you will join me in this pursuit of the truth. So, where has this pursuit led me? Well, into that truth desert of politics. Yippee! <laughs> now, my first real exposure to how parched this truth desert really was happened during my first campaign for office. I ran for the Michigan Senate. The year was 2010, the year of the Tea Party wave. People who had never really paid attention at all to politics, such as my wife and I, were finally waking up to the fact that our political system was broken. Now, I could either yell at the TV or radio, or I could actually go off and do something about it. So after much prayer, 
I decided to run for office as a problem solver, not a politician. I was eager to apply two decades of engineering problem solving know-how to the complex differential equations of our political system. I was a complete newbie to politics. I didn't even realize at the time that not everybody was interested in solving problems. Furthermore, I didn't even realize the full extent to which there were people overtly and covertly opposed to solving problems. And while there were warning signs during my first term in office, the gloves came off during my second term. Now, during my first term, I hit the politics as usual crowd pretty much by surprise. I was elected to the Senate leadership team and was able to implement significant solutions related to jobs, education, and health care. As chairman of the state police and the Department of Military and Veterans Affairs budget, I was able to apply my private sector management experience and converted each of these budgets into performance-driven service level agreements. And the results were remarkable. We reduced the number of top 10 crime cities in Michigan by 75% and improved our veteran services from the worst in the nation to the second best in only three years. Despite these results, I was the only returning state senator in my second term that was denied any chairmanships. The reasons I was given? I was told by the incoming Senate Majority Leader that I was too vocal in my opposition to Medicaid expansion, otherwise known as Section 2001 of Obamacare. And I was also too vocal in my opposition to Common Core Standards, which had been driving our education performance into the ground for years. I was indeed energetic in my opposition to these policies. But the real rub was that I offered tangible alternatives to these policies. You see, I provided information that was inconsistent with the information being pushed by party leadership and their friends in the media. Now, mind you, my policy solutions were consistent with my party's platform. Theirs were not. My policy solutions, however, were not the solutions that would benefit the financial backers of the Senate Majority Leader. The Senate Majority Leader and his financial backers wanted to make an example out of me. I represented an existential threat to people content with politics as usual, and to a certain extent, I still do today. Now, how do the power brokers res respond to such threats? By silencing them. That's why I was removed from chairmanships. That's why I was later removed from all committee assignments altogether. It was about silencing a narrative that threatened their grasp on power. I once thought politics in America was a battle between Republicans and Democrats, but it's not. It's a battle for truth itself. That's why I created Let's Fix Stuff. This is where we will win the battle for truth. This is where we take on the media by providing information they refuse to share. We go beyond sharing information, though. We package this information into solutions. Now, the media is very good at promoting problems. You remember the, uh, the adage, if it bleeds, it leads. Well, many of their political collaborators love it when they fan the flames of problems. What the media rarely tackles are solutions, especially solutions that benefit the majority of citizens. Now, does it make sense why we're calling this site Let's Fix Stuff? Let'sFixStuff.org will be the destination for those seeking the truth. Let'sFixStuff.org will be the destination for those seeking solutions to problems. Our political system is in dire need of policy solutions. Together, we can fill this gap. Together, we can push aside politics as usual. Together, we can identify and promote the best solutions to our nation's policy challenges. America needs our help. And much as with the Apollo 13 mission, failure is not an option.